Hello friends, I Deepika Shrivastava, Assistant Professor from the Department of Computer Science from Biani Group of Colleges, Kalwar. I am here to deliver a lecture on process management from the topic operating system. So we will start with what is a process? A process is a program in running state. A program is a passive identity whereas, whereas process is, a, is an active entity. Process. Process resides in main memory whereas program that is static it resides in hard disk. According to programmers point of view, developers point of view, process is, a, is like a data structure. It has its own attributes as well as operations. Okay, now we will be talking about process attributes. As I told you, uh, process is a data structure. So it must be having its attributes. Those are process ID, just to address program counter, like which process is to, is, is to be executed next, it comes under program counter. Next is process state. There are a lot, lot many states of a pro, pro, program process, so that come under process state. Next is priority. If there is a priority process, it should be executed first, else all other processes next. Then comes GPRs, general purpose registers. Those are used for computation purposes. And last is list of open files and devices which we use during processing. Okay. We'll uh, talk about PCB. This is called PCB, Program Control Block, which has all, almost all the information about a process which is being currently executed. Okay. Here's a look of PCB. PCB contains... Process ID, priority, process state, GPRs used, list of open and closed open files and devices. This error indicates the, uh, the link to the next PCB, ne next process. Likewise, the process continues. Now, we will be, see we'll be seeing process operations. Process operations are creation, deletion and running. Now, the most important part of this session is this diagram. This is complete process management. So, be careful. We'll start with new. New. It is the place where the processes are created. Child processes are created. Now, from here, from new state to ready state, to carry processes from new state to ready state is the work of long-term scheduler. It is the work of long-term scheduler to carry the processes from new to ready. Now, here, if, the, if everything goes well, if no problems come, then from ready state, uh, the process uh, gets, uh, comes to the running state. And finally, after in running state, it gets executed and gets terminated successfully. In case, if here comes the problem, if, uh, you know, uh, the processes are coming from new to ready, a ready queue is formed, which are waiting for their chance for execution. So in that case, one process from ready to run has come. But here, if it needs any sort of I.O. operation, input-output operation, in that case, it gets blocked. Because we are working in multi-programming environment and we can't allow computer CPU to sit idle. In that case, the pro that process goes gets blocked and comes under block state. So, but why? Because it is waiting for I.O. Okay. Here, it will get, uh, if it gets back I.O., I mean, uh, what it wants, input output resources. If it gets, well, it will get back to ready state. It will once again put it itself into ready queue. It will wait for its chance. If everything goes well, it will again get to the run state and finally get terminated. Another condition. During block state, when it was uh, waiting for its I.O., in that case, if the, IO, the resource is not available, it gets back to the, it searches the secondary memory. That if the data is in secondary memory, that in that state is known as suspend block. That means I.O. which is needed by the current process is not in the uh, primary memory. It needs to be searched into the secondary memory. So it needs to get into secondary memory. Resume, if it gets the data correctly, it will again come to the block state and from here it gets to the ready state running and terminated as well. Now, if 
in from here to suspend ready. Why the switch is done? It is just because the if I/O is completed, but lack of resources. That is, I/O is being done, but resources not, are not met. Resources are not available. In that case, it can't be directly moved to the block state, whereas it has to be moved to suspended ready queue. Then, from suspended ready queue, if it gets the resources on time, it will come switch to the ready state. The process switches to the ready state, and likewise, the process from ready goes to run and finally to termination one thing i told you from new to ready it is the work of long term scheduler but from ready to run the shortest work this shortest work is carried out by short term scheduler sds whereas all the work like switching from block to suspend that is in which the process switches from main memory to secondary memory those works are carried out by medium term scheduler so there are three types of schedulers long term short term and medium term the work of long term scheduler to take the process from new to ready short term scheduler ready to running and medium term scheduler all the suspended pro uh, suspended processes are carried out with the help of medium term scheduler this is all with process management if you want to have more information regarding this topic please visit our website www.gurukpo.com uh, thank you thank you very much